So next to me is probably one of the most interesting products that has come here to the studio. This is the Steady Cross. So this looks a lot like a motorized gimbal, but actually functions more like a steady cam. And what's interesting is that it uses magnets down below and also does not require any batteries and the setup to get everything balanced takes about two to three minutes and it actually works very well. So what I wanted to do was put it to the test and compare it to something like a motorized gimbal, like a DJI Ronin-S. So a buddy of mine, Brandon Washington, who's also a YouTuber, was coming down to Los Angeles and I thought it would be a great idea to collaborate with him. So what we wanted to do was compare this to the Ronin-S and kind of see the differences between both a motorized gimbal and something more like this guy right here. So what we wanna do first is do a couple of different shots and compare them side by side. So at first what we did was we had the take with the Ronin-S where I would be walking just a very simple shot, he would be behind me and do a 180 tracking shot where I was center frame. So for the Ronin-S, this should be a walk in the park. So we went ahead and ran that first and as expected, it was very easy for the Ronin-S. Now, the next thing what we did was with the Steady Cross. Keep in mind, this was the very first time that I had used something like this and also Brandon. We literally just, or he literally just picked this up, hit record on his camera and we went with the shot. Now keep in mind, we used a Sony a7 III with a Sigma 35 millimeter lens and we also disabled in-body image stabilization, both on the Ronin-S and also with this, to make it as fair as possible and not have the camera work in any way to help the footage look any better. So we went ahead and ran it now with this. Remember, this was his first shot and I also, to kind of make it a little bit more challenging for him, I said, we're only doing one take. So this is it, this was his very first take and I wanted to see what to expect out of it. And surprisingly, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't that good either. However, because it was his first time using it, he had never used anything like this before. It was kind of all over the place. So there is a small learning curve like anything. Obviously he's been using the Ronin-S for months since it first came out. So he has a lot of experience and something like this just requires like how you're gonna turn it, the momentum, the inertia and stuff like that. So he didn't do bad, but obviously I don't think it was that great. However, I do like the more smoothness of it. And we'll talk about that smoothness a little bit later. Now for the second shot, we wanted to kind of step it up a little bit more. So for this take, I was running and he was chasing behind me. And then we did a second take where I was actually chasing him. And then he was running backwards, trying to keep everything steady. So as expected with the Ronin-S, we filmed that first and it turned out really great. What I did notice is that the Ronin-S had a lot of micro jitters. You can kind of see it mainly when you're seeing it from the side, but you can fix that in post. Or if you have a camera that has in-body image stabilization, which we did, but we turned it off, I'm sure it would kind of fix that and make it a little bit better. Now, when we ran it with the Steady Cross, I noticed that it was, like, once again, it had that floaty effect, very similar to what you get with a Steadicam, which personally I am a fan of. It almost feels a little bit more immersive, adding another layer of dimension in my opinion, and I kind of like that. I almost felt like I was running with Armando. Yes, that's me. But I felt like, you know, that movement, like I can feel that desperation of the camera movement. And if that's something that you're into, like that's really cool. And I think that that adds that extra layer that, you know, if that's the look that you're going for, where the Ronin-S was just very smooth. I mean, as expected, it is motorized and you kind of lose that element, which is not a bad thing if that's the look that you're going for, but I prefer that like that chasing where just, you almost feel like you're there, just running right next to me. So I like that. Now for this third scene, we kind of wanted a little bit more dynamic movement. So what I was going to do was run from the right side and hop over some rails. And then Brandon was going to come from this side, start, start very low, like pointing towards the ground and then moving up as, I, as he moves up, he sees me, or he kind of reveals me in frame like a hero shot, running, jumping over this fence, or not fence, it's a rail, and then what we were gonna do is add another shot from behind to kind of mash those two together, and then you can see me running away. So we ran it with the Ronin-S first, and as expected, it turned out great. I didn't really notice any micro jitters here. Then again, he wasn't really walking or running. He just took a couple of steps forward, and then he panned up, 
and then for the back shot, he was panning down. So uh, both shots turned out really great and you can mash them together and they look really solid. So no complaints there. With the steady cross, so I knew that there might be a little bit of an issue because he had to start low. So when you start low, you have to kind of do this. And then when you move up, there is somewhat of a delay. Remember, there's no motors to help you out. So it's not like you can push a button, but surprisingly, it actually worked out really well. And it was very smooth too. Another thing, again, going back to what I was saying about adding that layer of dimension, there's that floaty movement, like that camera that's just kind of like in midair and you're just, you just feel like you're there in that action scene. Again, personally for me, I'm a big fan of that. And this all comes down to your own personal preference, your creative choice really when you're filming that video or movie, depending on what you want from or what you want to show to your audience and how you wanna make them feel. So what I'm gonna do next is show you the sequence with a little bit more of an aggressive color grade and also some music. And then you let me know which one you like the best. So which one did you guys like better? Personally for me, when I look at the Ronin S footage, it's like very clean, clinical, almost too perfect in a way. And I feel like it gets stripped away from that layer of dimension that I was mentioning before, where this one's almost like, in a way like you feel like, oh my gosh, Armando's running. Well, like if I was the actor, right? Like you can see that desperation of just like, the camera just moving, like trying to pace. I like that. It just, to me, gives it that, uniqueness of, oh my gosh, like he's in trouble, like he needs to get out of there or whatever's happening, right? That to me, this adds that extra layer where the Ronin S just feels too perfect. Once again, not a bad thing with the Ronin S if that's the look that you're going for. So if I had to pick one, I'd pick this. Now, mind you, these were action sequences. There are things like, for example, if you're doing demos or like a product shoot, or if you're doing like maybe a car commercial, this is probably not going to be the best. If you want something more, again, that perfect clinical look, then yeah, a stabilizer is gonna be better. But I feel like this is a little bit more immersive. Like if I was shooting more of a short film and I wanted to get some walking shots, I prefer walking running shots with this over a gimbal because I feel that this just has that movement. I almost feel like I'm there. Now, there are some drawbacks with this. Obviously, it's not perfect and neither is the Ronin S. For example, the Ronin S has modes that this just can't do. One of them is like the 360 mode. There's no way you can do that with this. Obviously, there's no motors. Uh, another thing is like with the Ronin S, you can use a zoom lens. Like this is a 24 to 70. I can balance it at maybe 35 mil and then change the focal length and the motors will compensate for that shift in weight where this like I balanced it at 24 but if I move it to 70 it's gonna fall forward as expected you see so now what that means is I have to now rebalance everything it's gonna take time so that's you know downtime from your shoot as opposed to the gimbal you can just make those changes really quickly balancing this doesn't take that long it's no different than a gimbal so I'm gonna say that's pretty even however with a gimbal I can use more weight well again this depends on what gimbal you're using but on the Ronin S since we're comparing them side by side this maxes out at three and a half pounds so with this EOS R and this 24 to 70 like this is it like you can see the weight here I can't even shift it any further back so this is as much weight as I can with this 24 to 70, but I would never really use a 24 to 70 because this is literally useless because I would have to rebalance it. So I would use a prime lens. But even again, if I move the, uh, the screen like this, now it's gonna go to left, see? So little things like that, if I did that with a gimbal, it wouldn't be such a problem. So those are things you have to kind of keep in mind and make sure that when you balance it, you really can't add any more weight to it. Also breaking this down, this is, bulkier than a gimbal. This has, you know, more components to it. If you can obviously strip it down, but it still takes up, I feel like it would take up more room. 
There's weights that obviously add more weight to your camera bag. However, I will say that using this, personally for me, I actually prefer using this, meaning using it like in shooting because you're holding it with two hands and it's so easy and smooth to do that when you're holding it with one hand like a gimbal, look at this, like this is way more heavier and I just get tired. Like if I had to use a gimbal, which sometimes I do, after 15, 30 minutes, I, I don't wanna touch it anymore. Where this, I can shoot for a couple hours and I'm okay. This is actually really nice because again, you're holding it with two hands, so you're distributing the weight between your two arms. So that makes it a lot easier. So now, this is not saying that this is better than a gimbal or a gimbal is better than this. You just have to pick the right tool for the job. And this does a really good job at doing what it's supposed to do, which is give you a stabilized feel with your camera or stabilized look, but it also provides that other layer of element that I was talking about where gimbal is just very precise. If you're looking for that precision, of course the gimbal is the way to go. In any case, I'll leave a link down below if you guys are interested in learning more about this. And also Brandon did a video on his channel, more on his take if you guys are interested in watching that. I will leave a link down below to his channel, so make sure to check him out. My name is Armando. Thanks again for watching and you will catch me in the next one. Adios.